here. Okay. All right. Well, welcome, welcome. We appreciate so much that y'all have come. Everybody is a little nervous now. So thank you each for coming and following all the traffic and getting out and everything. So I am excited to introduce you to Brianna. You'll know more about her story in a few minutes, but she is going to talk to us about fueling your performance and the entire athletic spectrum, which actually looks like we have here, all the way from one end of the athletes <laughs> to the other end of um, performance. And um, she'll use a lot of her information from her bachelor's, and she's also a certified personal trainer. And she's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not personal. <laughs> yes, so I'm excited. Thank you, round of applause. Um, <laughs> that y'all are able to come tonight. I will move kind of quickly since y'all are in person, though. I can slow down to give questions. That was harder last time on the Zoom. I was just trying to catch everyone's comments and stuff. But I want to start with who I am. So you got to hear a little bit about. So I am lucky enough, I've been around the Juice Plus company since I was probably Brooklyn's age. Wow. I was six years old <laughs> when our family was introduced to Juice Plus by a personal trainer. So I have two big brothers. One of my brothers had a bunch of had tubes in his ears, has an auditory processing disorder, really bad allergies. Both my parents are teachers and they were aware that when his allergies got bad, he couldn't hear anything at all. And that was gonna set him up for failure. So a personal trainer introduced my parents to Juice Plus, said, I have no idea if this would be helpful, but it should help its plants. My mom has her background in science and exercise sports science. So it made sense to her. So we got on it and I grew up what I thought was normal. We didn't get sick. We went to the doctor once a year. We're all athletes. So we had to go for the physical once a year, but that's the only time we went to our doctors. We never got the flu. We all played sports. Like I said, we all were really competitive. <laughs> One of my brothers went on to play college, um, soccer, but we were never sore. We didn't miss school, any of that. And I thought that that was normal. I was learning as I was getting older, that is not the normal of what people were experiencing. That was just the normal for our household. And yeah, that was what we had. So I went off to college. My parents did what most parents do. You turned 18, you got to start paying for your own stuff, right? <laughs> and I was on an academic scholarship at a and and this did not fit that budget. So I just plus did not fit it. So I didn't start, I stopped taking it. And with that, I started experiencing things I'd never experienced before. For the first time, I wasn't able to sleep through the night. It was covered, my arms, my face, my chest, my back covered in cystic acne. It got really bad where I couldn't even put a shirt on to go to class. I started having anxiety attacks and I'm a little competitive. I was still playing club sports there, but I was sore. I wasn't finishing first. That was really hard for me. <laughs> and so I called my mom up after a couple months, that whole semester. I think I spent more time in the doctor. I was on more antibiotics for stuff with my skin, more money on copays and prescriptions than I had my entire life combined. And that was different for me because I'd never spent time in the doctor's office. So I called my parents and said, okay, maybe those little capsules have got something in them. <laughs> At the time I was studying nutrition, I was set to go to pharmacy school. That was always my goal. So on the medical mindset, something this simple shouldn't make this big of a difference, right? It, it shouldn't have that big of an impact. So I never thought this is what that would be, but got back on, everything resolved itself. Every once in a while I have some breakouts, but during stressful seasons, which I think is normal <laughs> and it's been a complete game change. So I'm excited to share just a little bit more about this and how to feel for performance. So first I wanna talk about what an athlete is. So I wanted to, just to throw out, give me some ideas, so many shout out a word on what they think an athlete is. An exerciser. Okay, one more, what you got? Competitor, okay, perfect. So the dictionary actually describes an athlete here, someone that's proficient in sports, someone that's trained or skilled in exercises, someone has naturally required traits. So we're naturally gonna think of these guys and girls on the right, right? But what about these people? I'd say they're proficient in sports, they're skilled or trained. They've got things that are natural or acquired, acquired traits, but they're all different categories, right? So I wanna talk about, make sure you, we start this conversation today, whether you're the little kid playing, you have little kids playing, or you're on the other season of life where you're still just staying in shape and looking at the longevity, that you're an athlete, we're just gonna talk through the different categories of that. 
So another thing on what every athlete needs. So shout out a few things that what you think every athlete needs across the board that's common. Okay. As y'all can tell, I like participation. So <laughs> what else do you think? Protein. Protein, good, yes. So going through some of these sleep, feeling well with that clean diet and with your food and drinks, your hydration, having a good plan, and then having consistency. So tonight we're really going to focus on fueling well in this part. So did you know that every athlete needs a certain amount of daily servings of fruits and vegetables? These are the fresh, raw fruits and vegetables. And this is just the minimum. So I don't know if this was startling to you as it was to me, even someone in nutrition. We're going to go back to those categories. So see where you fit. You might, this is just a basic overview, so you might fit into a different category, but do you see how many servings of fruits and vegetables you're supposed to eat there? So a lot of questions then on what is a serving, right? So depends if it's cooked or raw, the American Heart Association follows these recommendations for fruits and vegetables, and the Mayo Clinic recommends that one, two, three approach. This has gotten really common because it's doable for people. Have one at breakfast, two at lunch, three at dinner, and three at snacks. It helps you fit in six to nine fruits and vegetables every single day on a doable, easy to put on your plate kind of way. So what's the problem, right? That should be really simple. Well, 90% of us fail at that every single day. So if you're anything like that, you were taking a test, we'd all flunk out of school. Um, we just honestly out convenienced ourselves from health. We've got a go, go, go life schedule. We've got things that you can drive through now. You can pick up prepped meals. Lots of drive throughs I don't know anybody that's asking for fresh, raw fruits and veggies as your sides. <laughs> I've got people that I've heard the kitchen just came with the house. They genuinely don't <laughs> get ever. So you don't have a lot of that happening. So for those of the 10% that do eat that, those are the ones that I joke around us that, that walk on water. <laughs> um, this is how, this is really important that I noticed that the nutritional punch, the nutritional value of food in today's world has just drastically changed. So the that fruits and vegetables your grandparents were eating are just not the same fruits and vegetables that we're eating today. Plus we've got environmental toxins that are increasing. These are things that you can't even control depending on the city you live in, the waters you drink, everything outside of what you control. And then including also anything like lotions, any of the room sprays, any of the things that you do have control over, but you might not even know have environmental toxins. Add in those of us who try to work out, that also puts stress on our body, who actually just live a stressful life. That's all gonna cause stress on your body from everything we do from working all day to raising little ones, from rushing from practice to practice, everything you've got on your plate can provide stress in your body. So how do we make it all better, right? That's what we're all trying to get to, right? Okay, brief, get to the point, get to the punchline, right? So here's some five tips I'm gonna go through that'll help you fuel better, no matter what category you're in. So first, set some goals and know your body. Know which category you fall in, what are some of your goals you're working on. Last night I had people write this down, so if you're someone who takes notes, if you wanna write down some of your goals, whether they're strength, agility, flexibility, maybe they're weight related for you. Also write down what category you are. That's going to change that level of those plants that you need. What life season are you in? What are your biometrics? Some of this you can control, some of this you can't. You can't make yourself get taller or shorter. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you can control what you weigh. You can't control what, how old you are. You can't control your hormone levels. I mean, some of that you can. But some of those biometrics, that all really factors into so much of what makes you and your body individually different. What's your activity level? Are you someone who's pretty inactive? Do you work out a couple times a week? How hard are those workouts? Are they pretty rigorous? Are they pretty simple? What do we got going on there? And then this all boils down to give us a BMR. So this is a basal metabolic rate. So I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but that is what a coach will help you walk through to figure out what is your body need? What is just your baseline? That if you laid in bed all day long, what would your body burn just existing? And then that then helps them determine what you need to do based on to gain weight or lose weight or any of those goals you're working on. Second one, second tip is to start strong. So if you're a morning workout person, especially eat a meal before you work out, eat at least one hour before. This is healthy carbs and lean proteins. I'm gonna give you some examples of this later on. For those that are focusing on weight loss, remember this is general, so definitely work with your body because this can cause the blood, low blood sugar dizziness, but fasted cardio is really helpful for those that are trying to lose weight. 
only effective if you work out in the morning, because obviously you don't want to fast all day and then go work out, but that's really helpful for a lot of people doing that. So this is a good tip or a good chart on when to eat before a workout. If you're someone who's working out in the morning, you can eat a small snack right before someone who's eating after dinner or after a big lunch, depending on how your meals look, or someone who's eating during the day in between meals, maybe you've got an afternoon time slot. This is really helpful on when to eat before a workout. You wanna get something that's not too heavy, but something that's gonna give you everything you need to get through the workout effectively. So number three is watching your portions. We've all heard this a million times, but this is so important. This is honestly probably the most important step. This includes your snacks and your drinks. You'll be amazed at how much sugar and things can be added in if you're just not watching those portions. So if you're doing these before you work out the large meals three to four hours before, the small meals and snacks one to three, and play with it. You're gonna know your body is a little different than everybody else's. You might be able to eat something a little heavier and then go to the gym and lift but you may not be able to go and run, right? Like it's gonna depend on what your activity is that you're asking your body to do as well. So for those focusing on weight loss and maintenance, you're gonna to wanna to focus on those high lean proteins, those high fiber foods. The reason is these take longer to digest. So they're gonna keep you full longer, reducing your snacking with still giving you all the high quality nutrients that you need. Read those food labels. I'm gonna go through this in a little bit, but it's really easy to find some healthy swaps if you just get comfortable turning that box around and comparing them when you're at the store. I will also say, even if you get comfortable buying one brand, brands get bought by other companies all the time. So constantly be flipping those boxes over. It's just like anything else in the world, companies get exchanged. So flip those bottles and boxes around and check those food labels. Watch your liquid calories, especially if you're a drinker, that can add up. You can drink an entire day's worth of calories in one happy hour if you're not careful. So watch that. Don't skip meals. I know we had some questions last night about intermittent fasting, which is definitely a different thing. This is when people are intentionally skipping them because they don't want to hit those calories or they've overeaten. And so they're, they're skipping them for very different reasons. And don't do that because it can really mess with your metabolism. So you might get some short-term benefits, but long-term it's going to really cause some issues for you. And eat on a smaller plate. This is one of the first things I tell people that are trying to lose weight. It's not a joke, but our, our dinner plates used to be about this big, and now they're about this big. If you go to Thanksgiving, they get those long, long, long ones, you know, you basically have a serving platter, right? So they say our, our dinner plates have doubled in the last 50 to 60 years, and so have our waistlines. And it's because if you see a smaller plate, it'll naturally work with your brain where you think you're full because you finished your plate, even if you have less food on it than if you ate on a bigger plate. So don't opt for those big, fancy, beautiful plates if you can opt for the little ones. And then always eat plenty of plants and drink plenty of water. So weight gain is gonna look kind of similar. The biggest difference on this one is you're gonna be eating more often. So you wanna have five to six smaller meals rather than those two to three larger meals. Still want to be eating those high lean proteins, those high fiber foods, adding in some of those whole grains and eating plenty of plants and drinking plenty of water. Biggest thing on this is adding in those snacks. So make sure you're snacking well. Some of the great things are fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds. Those are good options. Smoothies, energy bites, and good clean bars are always really great options as well. So how to read a nutrition facts label. So show of hands, do you all know how to read these? Okay. So a lot of people don't know how to read these. That was one of the first things when I started coaching that I realized this is on every food option you have, right? So I just assumed people knew how to read them, but that was a surprise for me. So definitely first and foremost, always check that serving size. I have had more people think that a serving is the box or serving is the bag. Definitely not the case. And so always check that. Eyeballing things is where your goals will get lost real quick. So even when you get big bags of stuff, I always say like, it's usually cheaper to buy in bulk, but immediately go home, put them in individual bags according to the serving size, right? Space them out for you so you can still grab and go and make it convenient for you, but it'll help you stay on track. Those calories per serving, calories are not gonna deem how healthy a food is, just because it's a low calorie option does not mean it's a healthier option, but it is a good thing. I always call them food points when I'm working with people. So they are something that your body needs to burn but definitely keep an eye on that and realize that that is per serving. So just put that correlation together. Um, understanding the daily values, this is gonna be based on someone that is on a 2000 calorie a day diet. So back to that BMR, if you're someone who's lower or more than that, this is not gonna be as effective for you. 
But if you're someone close to that 2000 range, then you can use that for more of a daily value for you. The nutrients to watch, this is where you can really check and make those healthy swaps. So you can keep an eye on the things that you want to reduce, like the sodiums and the fats and the cholesterols. Depending on your goals, the carbs, the fiber, and the protein, you'll want to watch those based on if you're trying to gain weight, trying to lose weight, all that. So that's going to be a little bit more specific for you, but that's how you can find those healthy swaps. One of the biggest things I learned in nutrition schools is a lot of what goes on this side of the label is all regulated. What's on the other side of the label isn't. So there's a lot of fancy coined terms that will make you think it's a healthier option. I've seen non-GMO on things that don't even have GMOs. You know, I've seen organic on things that there's no way that they couldn't be, right? Like there's a lot of terms that are just catchy that will make you pick that bottle up rather than the bottle next to it. And the bottle next to it might have been a healthier option. So make sure to look through this while you're doing that. And then finish strong. So tip number four, eating after you exercise. This, in my opinion, is even more important than eating before. They're both important, but you have to refuel. And what you refuel with is going to be how your body builds up from that. So make sure you're eating healthy proteins and fats. That's going to really help with that muscle recovery and replace those glycogen electrolyte stores. So great options are protein shakes. Um, if you're in the morning, like an egg omelet with veggies is a really good option for you. Apples with any kind of natural nut butter. Ideally, you want something 15 to 30 minutes after workout, no matter what kind of workout you've done, you wanna replace what you've just taken out, but at least within one to two hours. I know 15 to 30 minutes, some of y'all aren't even home from the gym yet, right? So if you can take something in the car with you, that makes that a little easier. And then portions are key based on your goals. Someone that's trying to gain weight is gonna have a little bit more than someone who's trying to lose weight. It's gonna have a smaller option there. So eating before and after is crucial. It just depends what's on your plate and how much is on your plate. So last tip on this one is drinking up. Don't ever forget to hydrate before, during, and after. You wanna replace that water loss during sweating from your exercise. That's gonna help prevent cramps, heat exhaustion, stroke, especially when you're outside in the Texas summers. It's also gonna help regulate your body temperature overall while you're drinking during, and it's gonna help lubricate your joints. And be really cautious with those sports drinks and health drinks. Sugar-free does not mean sweetener-free. And so be careful with that. There's a lot of caffeine, sodium, and sugar that's added into those drinks. So unless you're intentionally needing a ton of electrolytes, it's honestly better just to stick with water. So I won't say any brand names, but you see a ton of things showing up, especially at little kids' soccer games and little kids' baseball games, and they're all colored with food dyes. They've got tons of sugar in them. You might as well give them a soda. Like it's not doing them better just because you see a professional athlete on TV drinking it. Right. So definitely keep an eye on that. If you're someone who needs it, you're doing Ironmans, you're doing really high intensity training, you need that electrolyte. There's tons of great options that really are sugar free, um, but just make sure you're drinking up and giving your body what you need. So some of us want to be athletic and some of us want to be healthy, but I've learned that they are not the same thing. So what's the big difference? Athletic is really going to focus on performance, on appearance, all of that. Health is going to focus on longevity, quality of life. So what about the people that want both, right? I feel like most of the people in this room want to look good and feel good, but you also really want to like live to 120 and you want to make it forever. So this is what um, we're going to talk about here. So I'm going to split into two categories for us. And most of us will probably understand this, your micronutrition and your macronutrition. So the best way to describe this is the oil in the tank and the gas in the tank. You might've heard this analogy before, but you have to have both. Who here has known someone who didn't change the oil in their car for a long time? maybe ever, right? So the car ran, right? It got him down the road. It started to have a few minor problems. Then it started to have a few major problems because they weren't putting the time and the money into it for whatever reason. Maybe they didn't know they needed to change the oil. Maybe they didn't have the money to change the oil. Maybe they didn't have the time to pull into the mechanic shop, whatever it was. Eventually that car is going to come to a complete halt. Our bodies are the exact same. The food is here. That's the gas in your tank. So most of us are running really well or decently well on macronutrition, we're running, but we're not running well, right? So we've got a lot of those issues that are populating and popping up because we're not stopping to put the time and money and invest back in and get some oil changes done on our body consistently. Okay, so now we're looking for the easy button because this is society, that's what we're, we're here for. That's why we all turn to supplements, that's why we turn to energy drinks, it's why we turn to vitamins in general. 
And we're obsessed with this easy button. The vitamin and supplement industry is massive. We're all looking for something that is a pill that we can take, the easy fix, right? We're pharmaceutically minded. We want to figure out what to take to make it better instead of focusing on what we can change to make it better. So it's all going to boil down and come down to our nutrition and what's on our plate. So we trust the pharmaceuticals and the doctors because it's science, right? That, that should be what we should trust, right? Do what your doctor says. It's what they always say, talk to your doctor first. And so we want to know what we're taking. Is it safe? Is it gonna help? Is there any research behind this? Talk to me about what I'm seeing. So the community that I'm part of had doctors that were looking for the same thing. They were looking for more, they were looking for better, but they needed it to be easy. They needed it to be affordable and they needed it to be something that all the families could come together and get on. We also have some athletes in our organization that were looking for the same thing. They wanted something easy and convenient that they could take, but they wanted to give them the edge. They wanted to bring that gold medal home, maybe that Super Bowl ring. They wanted to bring a world title. Whatever it was, they wanted something to give them that edge. And we all want results. We want to know that if we're going to spend our time and our money, it's going to be worth it. We want to know why it works and everything there. So... This is something that I'm going to talk about today that has I've taken over 25 years, like you all heard in my story, that has this does all of this every day in my body. As a personal trainer and health coach, these are the ones specifically that help me with my clients, with their stories, with their goals, with their results. So I'm going to have two people come tell their story and share the stage with me. So I have Kat start first and come up and share a little bit about her story. Or you can sit. It's just so, so horrible. Hey, <laughs> um, I'm Pat Mondeo. I am actually a certified personal trainer and a health coach as well, but I live here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, I coach a group fitness facility called Orange Cherry Fitness. If you guys see my Hell Week shirt, we're in the middle of our hardest week of the year at Orange Cherry. Um, and so we got a lot of athletes there. Um, I was introduced to Juice Plus. About 10 years ago, my father was, is a cancer survivor and he actually did his treatments overseas in Asia and uh, declined chemo here in the United States. And it was really eye-opening that they told him basically to get on a diet of fruits and vegetables, move his body and manage his stress as his treatment. And that kind of pissed me off, honestly, because I was like, that's not going to fix it. Um, and it's not the answer to not all people, but for my father, it actually was. And he's now continuing to live in Asia and he has totally transformed his lifestyle. Uh, he's now 73 and healthier than he was at 53. Um, so that got me really fired up about why our health system was the way it was. Um, at the time I was in IT consulting and I totally expected to go up and through that culture. Um, but it took me, that story caused my breaks and I realized that I was walking in the same path as my father and it was time to kind of take a pause and make some choices. So I actually learned about Juice Plus. I was like, wow, that's the simplest solution to eating more fruits and vegetables I've ever heard of. Obviously my dad needs it. I smuggled it into China for like 10 years. Not even kidding. Looks like drugs when you're trying to get it across security. Just so you know, I'll be smuggling some into him in two weeks when I go visit him in Asia. Um, because he's been on Juice Plus ever since. Um, and it just made sense to me. And the more I started to take Juice Plus, um, the more I started to see slowly, not overnight, things change in my own health. And I just got real fired up to tell everybody about this simple solution as well as help people with prevention. So 10 years later, I'm now certified as a fitness uh, professional. And people are constantly asking me, what should I eat? When should I eat? How should I eat? And I can tell you the number one thing I tell them is it's not what you're doing in the hour that you're here with me. It's what you're doing in the 23 hours that you're outside. And fueling for performance is the harder thing because there's 23 hours of your day that you have to be on point, right? Uh, whereas it's really easy to come in the gym for one hour and just punish yourself for what you <laughs> ate last night, which is a lot of what our society is these days. Um, but to actually have to turn and take responsibility for the other 23 hours of your day so that you can get to those weight gain, weight loss, look and feel good goals is really the challenge our society is in. Um, and so there's no better time and place right now to be here, <laughs> to be learning a little bit more about that. Um, and I'm just excited for you to be here. So thank you for yeah, coming. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to have one more from the back. If you want to come up here, you can. So I'm going to have Tim share a little bit about his story. Oh, and maybe she's in health. <laughs> tell them your name and where you live and what's your favorite food. Um, my name is Brooklyn and I live in Delmarna. And my favorite food is 
Banana. <laughs> <laughs> she normally says broccoli. <laughs> Awesome. So uh, Tim and Carla Bartlett, we live in Solana, like uh, Brooklyn shared. Um, our background's in teaching and coaching. I'm a Wasa head softball coach in Solana. I have a, uh, I'm a former high school basketball coach and I have a, a basketball club. And so uh, we've all obviously, you know, in the coaching industry, we, we value health and training and athletes and things like that and know the value of, of nutrition and so forth and how it plays into it. Uh, but in 2019, God actually called me or asked me to give my kidney to one of my friends. And so uh, I'm now a living kidney donor. And so when you make that decision uh, to do that, then part of that is accepting you have to dedicate to a healthy lifestyle for the remainder of your life uh, to take care of the kidney. So anyways, uh, so that's funny that that happened uh, a couple of years ago uh, before I was introduced to this company. Uh, I was actually with another company in, in the industry. Uh, it was a little bit different concept, but we did have a, a product line uh, within the company that was similar. And uh, at the beginning of this year, that company uh, went a different direction and they discontinued that product line. So in April, I ran out of the nutritionals that I had been taking uh, because I had made the decision to, to focus on health and wellness uh, for myself. And um, I actually reached out to a good friend of mine, Mark and Kim Georgia in Waco, to go to church with these guys and uh, because he had he had talked to me a little bit about Juice Plus and I was familiar with Juice Plus just from the industry uh, when I knew that it was a, a great product and a credible company. So I actually called him and said, hey, I want to start making products. And uh, really that's where it began for us. Um, you know, we've been taking it since the spring. Uh, for me personally, I haven't had, you know, thank, praise the Lord, I haven't had any major health issues. So uh, it's really just been able to provide uh, you know, it's helped me with energy, just regulate the digestive, uh, just all that stuff. Uh, it's been good. Uh, and then also, you know, just helping with our diet because obviously I was not eating enough fruits and vegetables, <laughs> you know, just stay off my diet. So it's helped offset that. Uh, Carla, you know, she's, she's, she's coaching, she's busy, she has a busy schedule. So it's definitely helped her from an energy standpoint and uh, just, you know, digestive and all that. So we've been very, very pleased with our results. It's just really helped us maintain, maintain what we're doing add that nutrition that we needed and, um, and just regulate things. And so we're super excited and pleased with the results we're getting. And uh, we just feel like God's put this in our heart to go share with other families and help them be healthy and to go uh, help kids and families be healthy because ultimately the number one thing you can ever invest in is yourself. So if you're not healthy, then you can't go do all the other great things God's called you to do. So anyways, thanks for letting us share. Absolutely. She needs to go to the bathroom. So. <laughs> We'll take her out. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank y'all both for sharing. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit and show you now what we're eating. So it's a daily plant food support. It's raw plants in a capsule, a chew, a bar, a shake. Make it really simple, really easy for you. And without taking away any of the positive benefits of, it, of the plant. So this is my easy button, the micronutrition like we talked about before, and the macronutrition, the gas and the oil in the tank. So I personally take the capsules in the morning. My husband takes the chews, and so I maybe snack on her his in the afternoon. <laughs> it's fine. About that two or three time, two or three p.m. when you're wanting a snack, I snack on his, um, and then I drink a complete shake every morning. That's because I usually do my workouts in the morning. So this is something that gives me those healthy carbs and protein right before a workout without being too heavy. And then when I come home, depending on the level of my workout, I'll drink a perform shake to really help me replenish what I was doing from that. Um, so that is there on the ingredients. This is pretty simple. They keep it really clean. It's just plants to help you bridge the gap with what you are eating right now and what we all know we should be eating based on that scale at the front. I know I'm in that 90%. I don't eat like I should. I do not eat that many servings of fruits and vegetables every day. So this is my insurance policy. So like I said, I do one of these for breakfast every morning. The shakes are all sourced from real food just as well. There's no harmful or artificial ingredients and all the vitamins and minerals come from real plants. So no matter what category of athlete you are, we're here to protect, we're here to produce and create more performance for you. So we're safe for all athletes. One of the first things that you probably have all heard in this room is why soy. So there's a lot of research around the soy and the specifics that we use. We use a water wash soy, which means it's prepared really gently. 
It uses um, water washing without the harmful chemicals, which means you don't have any of those contaminants that are added, which are actually causing a lot of the things you've heard about soy all over the years. It's also made without GMO ingredients, and our farmers follow the responsible soybean standard program for anybody who knows what that is. <laughs> it's safe for those kid athletes, for those crawling all the way up to college age, and the kids eat free. So if you've got kids, definitely get with whoever shared or invited you tonight to talk to them about how you can qualify for that Healthy Starts for Families program. It's also safe for our pregnant and breastfeeding mom athletes. This was huge to me. If you can give stuff to a pregnant or breastfeeding mom, literally anyone can take it. This is the group that gets excluded from everything. So this was powerful for me that there was research and doctor testimonials and people testimonials about this with them during that season. It's also safe for professional athletes. So NSF certification, real short and sweet, what's in the bottle is on the label, what's on the label is in the bottle. This is used for companies and organizations like the NFL, the MLB, the PGA, a lot of those athletes that are top of the top that need that extra level of promise that there's not anything that could potentially give them a boost, right? That has a contaminant of anything that's not natural. But at the end of the day, just know that nature can't be duplicated. No matter how many times we try in a lab, we just can't do what nature can do. You can see that list of what's in the apple versus what's in the multivitamin. This is just one of the pages of the tens of thousands of phytonutrients, and this is what we get in that multivitamin, right? So you can just see what we can do on our own and what we already have available to us. So at the end of the day, eat what your body knows. Just eat a lot more plants. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I want you to leave with some information. I hope this is inspiring, especially the stories that were shared tonight. So thank you for that. But the next step is on you. It begins with you and what you want to do. How get with who invited you here, talk to them about this. They obviously care and love about you, whether they shared this recording with you or invited you here tonight. I love what I do with personal training and I love being an affiliate for the Juice Plus company. I work a lot with a lot of the Juice Plus partners. And so what I'm doing, if anyone wants to join along with me, I know it's this best season of year where we eat a lot, is we're doing a fit to feast with my organization. So this is something that we're starting up next week. It's going to focus on specifically, oh, and it didn't. And y'all aren't going to get to see the slide, but it's a fun little challenge. There is. There is that we're doing that specifically focuses on all those healthy habits, making sure you're getting the hydration, make sure you're taking the the oil change your body with that micronutrition, getting that sleep. I was like, the TV just came back on, so I have no idea what's happening now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this is something that will work alongside of any, there we go. Um, this will work alongside of any of the partners. that. So I love to do this with people that have a Juice Plus partner. I work in combination with your Juice Plus partner, just give you a little extra with the fitness and mindset with all the nutrition stuff you're getting. These are the rules I run my participants through. And so we're really excited to get this challenge started. So thank you all for coming tonight. I appreciate your time. So we've got time for question and answers. I know a couple of y'all had to leave right at 7.30. Do y'all have any questions? <laughs> and we did record this, so.